Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell the truth about silver. Today is Saturday the 19th of November 2022. We're publishing our Gold and Silver Weekly Update for the week ending the 18th of November. We saw prices dip a little this past week and we're going to go into some depth about interest rates over the next few months. Therefore, we'd better get to it. Gold fell $20 last week, falling from 1,771 to 1,751, having hit a high of 1,786 and a low of 1,747, a fall of just over 1%. In sterling terms, gold finished the week at £1,473, down £23. And in euros, it closed at €1,696. That's down €13. Silver fell 77 cents, falling from $21.72 to $20.95. Having hit a high of $22.25 and looked exciting at one point, and a low of $20.79, a fall of 3.5%. In sterling terms, silver closed at £17.62, that's down 74 pence on the week, and in euros it closed at 20.30 euros, that's down 0.69 euros. Obviously, as a result, the gold to silver ratio rose, and it rose from 81.5 to 1 to 83.6 to 1. Now, interestingly, the difference between gold's high and low was $39, compared with the previous week's difference of 108, which was exceptional. And the difference between silver's high and low was $1.46, which is slightly augmented, but and not much less than the previous week's difference, which was larger, of $1.67. Now, we did predict last week that we expected to see gold trade between 1725 and 1825, which it did very comfortably because the spread was relatively small, in fact. And silver trade in between $21.2250, which it did for most of the time, but it did dip into the lower outlier range of our $20.25 to $23. So it closed within that lower range outlier range rather than the upper end. Now looking at other financials, Bitcoin stands at $16,668. That's down just $168 on the week. Equities were stronger on Friday, but really little changed over the course of the week, though slightly down. The Dow Jones closed on Friday at 33745 That's down just two points, just two points on the whole week. The S&P 500 closed at 3,965, down 27 points on the week. And the Nasdaq Composite closed at 11,146. And that was down, in relative terms, a greater percentage of 177 points on the week. Oils were also down, thankfully, this past week, with Brent crude closing at $87.62. That's down $8.37. And WTI crude closing at $80.08, and, and that's down $8.88. If we can achieve further cuts in these prices, we may very well see that reflect in the inflation rate moving forward, though there's no guarantee of further reductions at this stage. We'll wait and see. The dollar index stands at 106.93. That's up just 0.64 points on the week. Let's now take a look at the economic data announced last week and what we have coming up this coming week. So taking a look at last week's data, we can see that on Monday, the New York Fed provided its one-year inflation expectation of 5.9% and its five-year inflation expectation of 24 whereby previously it predicted 5.4 and 2.2. Interesting, we still won't, according to them, have reached 2% inflation over a five-year period. But perhaps more importantly, the producer price index final demand came in at 0.2%, against expectations of 0.4. And this was quite interesting. The Empire State Manufacturing Index for November came in at a positive 4.5 compared with minus 6. 
But we pointed out last week the key date would be Wednesday because we had retail sales. And they came in much better than expected with retail sales of 1.3% versus zero the previous month and expectations of one2 And if we exclude vehicles, it did come in quite strongly at 1.3% compared with 0.6%. The import price index was minus 0.2 and industrial production minus 0.1. So these retail sales are showing, technically at least, that the economy is still robust in terms of customer spending. Now, of course, where they're getting that money from is another matter. And maybe we will see credit card debt rise, perhaps quite significantly. Either way, that's not a good sign if the Fed is thinking of cooling the economy by raising rates. And then on Thursday, we had the initial jobless claims coming in at 2,000 compared with expectations of 225 and a slight increase again in continuing jobless claims to 1.51 million and the Fed will be looking at this and ironically to some degree wanting this to rise because it will show that their interest rate policy is working which will cause a degree of unemployment isn't it ironic uh, the past few years they've wanted higher and higher employment and now to some degree to prove that their interest rate increase is working on inflation they're expecting higher unemployment oh, how the world changes now this coming week we have very little data and quite frankly it's only wednesday is noteworthy we have durable goods orders we will have, obviously, the initial jobless claims. We have flash PMIs, which we look at, but we don't take too much notice of those until we get the final. And then you have the UMIT Consumer Sentiment Index and the UMIT five-year inflation rate and new home sales. But perhaps, arguably, the most important thing on that day will be the FOMC minutes, giving us a guidance as to what to expect in December. And then we have the Thanksgiving holiday and nothing scheduled for Friday. So the only real day of note this coming week is Wednesday. Now the past few weeks we've seen the crypto market implode because, but not solely because, the crypto exchange FTX filed for bankruptcy and there are many accusations of fraud. In addition, a number of other exchanges are being regarded as potentially insolvent or trading at significant losses and again, we expect the crypto market to continue to suffer pain for some time to come. That market is now languishing at a market cap of some $832 billion, which ironically is some $170 billion less than the market cap of Bitcoin alone at its peak. And at one stage over the past 18 months or so, the 21,000 cryptos that exist had a market cap in excess of $3 trillion. So it's lost over $2.2 trillion. Now this means that these monies have either been lost or removed from this marketplace. Had interest rates not been rising, we could have seen quite a pump into precious metals, which was why at the start of the year, because we envisaged a bit of a hit on cryptocurrencies in particular and on equities, we could have easily predicted two to two thousand three hundred dollar gold and thirty to thirty five dollar silver. But as rates began to increase and it became clear that inflation was running out of control, then precious metals would be under pressure for the remainder of the year. Even though alternative investment products like equities and cryptos would also be under significant pressure. We're now in a very interesting state whereby inflation, even though it fell in the US, is still way beyond the Fed's target of ultimately 2%. And it could indeed take a number of years, not months, but potentially years, to get back down to that level, if it can be achieved at all. What we believe will now happen is that the Fed, having raised rates by 0.75% or 75 basis points on the last four occasions, we did state quite a few months ago that we expect that to happen but perhaps a half percent rise in the December FOMC meeting. And so we were heartened to see last week 
A Reuters poll revealed that 78 out of 84 economists agree with our forecast of a half percent increase in December. But the bad news is, however, is that they expect rates to rise ultimately to 7% compared with the current 3 and 3 quarters to 4% Fed funds rate. Now, we're not quite that hawkish, but we would not rule out an ultimate Fed funds rate, perhaps peaking at between 5.75 and 6%. But there again, we do not have the investigative resources or data the Federal Reserve has access to. So they could actually ultimately be right. But it certainly, in our view, puts paid to the arguments that many people in the precious metal space claim that there's no way we could have higher rates than 4%. We've always believed it could be higher, and we're probably now going to see that come to fruition, even though the national debt is at its highest level ever. Now, the reason for mentioning this is that with rates continuing to rise, the incentive to hold precious metals decline, and similarly with stocks. But there will come a time in the not-too-distant future whereby this trend begins to reverse. And when that happens, we will be extremely bullish gold and silver for sure. Or hopefully we can time it right just before that reversal takes place. Who knows? The question for many is that will investors believe that a 0.5% rise in December compared with 0.75% rises so far actually marks that turning point, i.e. higher rates but less of a hike? and therefore see an increase in gold and silver prices. That's possible, but we don't think it will last more than a couple of weeks when it eventually sinks in that rates may indeed have to continue to rise throughout possibly the whole of 2023. They may then change their minds. Add to this the potential of a global recession. Such rate rises will provoke and increasing unemployment, which is a key plank of achieving higher rates because you'll get higher unemployment levels and therefore less of a demand on goods and services and therefore prices coming down. We still believe if this does happen, then silver could be badly hit and gold will fare better because the industrial demand for gold is less than 10% compared with silver's 50 to 60%, depending which year we're looking at. So it's a difficult call to make, but we still do not believe that precious metals are out of the woods yet, and any increases short term in their price may simply be a knee-jerk reaction and just temporary blips. Equally, though, we don't see prices tanking, because where else will investors' money go until rate rises begin to stall and reverse? Now, looking at this next week, with little economic data being reported, prices are more likely to be affected by news events rather than economic ones. So with this in mind, we predict this coming week gold trading broadly between $1,700 and $1,800, with $1,675 towards the bottom end and $1,825 towards the higher end being its outlier range. And silver trading broadly between $20 and $22, with $1,950 and $2,250 as outlier. What do you think? Please do share your thoughts. Meanwhile, thank you so much for listening. If you haven't done so, do subscribe to our channel, not forgetting to press the bell sign so you're notified of our videos as and when they're published. We shall repeat this video tomorrow under a different thumbnail and header. And finally, we wish you a safe, enjoyable weekend to thank you for your support. And we hope and trust you have a very prosperous week ahead. Illuminati silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners.